Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. So, mate, we're going to have a look at the new kits that came with uh, Berlin German. Yes. Uh, which is basically the Panzer II stuff. Yeah, which is this box set, right? Which is, well, not oh, one quite of. this. This is one of two box sets. The other box just makes the Panzer II. Okay. Which we've got and we'll talk about because we've built them now and we can talk about them. We have indeed. So they sent us an extra one of these so we can build all the different variants and, and, and talk a little bit about it. Wonderful. So if you just want the Panzer IIs, you buy the Panzer II box. If you want the Vespa or the Marda, you buy this particular box. Do you want to open it up and see what comes in the box? Mm, wonderful. So, these are such cute dinner look tanks. They are really cute. Yeah. Completely useless. Um, because the two kits, they, they share a kind of common component on the sprue, but they are two different sprues. Am I right in thinking these are built off of the Panzer II, right? Yeah, yeah, they are. They're repurposing core, core the Panzer II uh, manufacturing that they've oh. already got. Yes, all right. Yeah, there right. we go. Uh, so you get four in here, Four FYI. in here. Four. Yeah, and the way they've designed it, I haven't got any of the Panzer II kits left because we've built them. Um, but this bit in the middle is common, the common to all three holes. This bit on this side is much more developed for the Vespa or the Marder. Yeah, wonderful. That's um, genius, that. So if I went to kit, what else did you get in here? Uh, you get decals, which is cool. Um, One of the dinky decal sheets. Yes. But it's got what? Is that eight or ten it's got, crosses? It's got uh, ten Balkan crosses, which is good. Which is good because there's only four vehicles In case you mess them here. up. Yeah, um, but yeah. it's also got pound signs pound and signs. Uh, tridents. All oh, right, these, uh, these are white transfers. They're specific. They're division, divisions. Uh, division symbols. Yeah, and I can't actually no, see really, them in, really in this see light. they really on this light. But yeah, they're division symbols. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and you also get the... Some Sciocast crew. Sciocast crew to go in the backs of. I'm curious to see if these are a newer version. They do seem quite stiff. Very good detailing on them. Yeah, they're which nice. Is good. And they've got bases. They so they'll be easier bases. to fix down. Boop. Yeah. Now there's not a lot of room in these, and I think there's enough for what? Is it two guys in each uh, or three guys? How many two poses? The pop. Binocular, slouchy man. Binoculars and slouchy man. There's Lean, two no, poses. There's leany man. Oh right, yeah. That's okay. what I was calling yeah, slouchy, yeah, slouchy man. man. Well, in my world, it's leany man. It's leany. So you got well, four. You got four so, two man crews. But you probably can't get much more than two guys in these. I mean, no. Although I'm sure they had more than two crew. Yeah, but... Kind of loader, commander... Driver. <laughs> driver, that's four. <laughs> uh, maybe the driver was also the... Um, the or or, or the was it, though? Loaders. Yeah. I don't know. I if don't the know. Panzer II was like a two-man crew... Two-man turret. Two-man turret. <laughs> Not there a two were two men crew. in there. I think in this version, which is a later one, it might even the be a three-man turret. One dude, turret. It? I thought I it was just a dude. It might be a three-man turret. That's why it's overworked, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a two or a three. Who knows? Man Anyways, that's off the, the topic. Two -man the Vespa and the Marder 2. Right, so we built these. Yes. We did. We had a go at building them because we wanted to Get tell you what it was like. Um, well, we want to talk about the Panzer okay, 2 first briefly. Right. I didn't build that, you built that. What was, what was I it like? I built that. Actually, really easy. I was expecting it to be really fiddly solely because it's, it's a tiny tank. It's tiny, yeah. Compared to everything else. Mm. But no, the pieces, it's engineered well, which I. You know, would expect from Battlefront now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like super new, isn't it? 2022 kit. Yeah. Everything's keyed where you'd expect it to be. Yes. The um, sprue gates on the tracks are really well positioned, so you're not having to damage the tracks themselves. Mm. That's something that was developed over over a lot of time. But yeah, all the bits that I thought were going to be tricky weren't. Because so the keying was good. The keying's good, and I pretty much built it without instructions as well. That's how good and it is. So these are intended for these late war tank training companies, although you'll not, there's no unit cards in here. No. Now that's becoming quite common because there are so many different German unit cards right. for the same vehicle yes. that they would just end up with loads of different boxes that all had the same vehicles in but different unit cards um, and every time they release a new box which is more specialized they're going to Same release again. another card yeah potentially um, a lot of waste eh? yes potentially a lot of waste and a lot of ident effectively identical product mm. uh, so they don't but their card packs are fairly cheap yeah and comprehensive right to the, to the yeah. additions and everything but this panzer 2 kit um, we'll get you a picture of the sprue if i haven't, haven't showed you it already 
it does build, mm. I'm saying two variants, but it's probably more than that, but it doesn't provide you with information about it. Yeah, you had to have a little look, didn't I you? Had, I had to get myself online, because there's two different upper holes, and there's two different turret, uh, um, commander's hatches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and it's quite an interesting piece how they've made the commander's hatch, because one is round and one is flat. But it's it's a it's more exactly of a tile that fits plate. in the roof. Yeah, yeah, isn't it the, the way they've genius. done it? Which that is, works which really is a well. clever way of handling the two different turret types. So the raised round cupola or cupola, whatever your preferred is, is <laughs> for the later versions. Whether that's from the D or the E or the F, I don't know. Certainly by the A, B, and C are tester models. So they, make, they only make like 30 of each. Oh, wow. Okay. Because they're, they're kind of ramping up production. They're mm. like, how do we do this? And they make they make changes and they make changes um, like 30 of each. But by the time you get to F and G, that's when you've got this kind of, this, this cupola. And I think it's the F that's got the turret bustle on the back. Yes, this bread basket thing. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> For your lunches. Um, so if you're making an A, B or C version, you want the flat... The, the 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 hatch the flat, flat hatch. hatch yeah yeah which is kind of square shaped and you also want the upper hole there's two different upper holes and you want yeah. the upper hole that's kind of tapered on the right hand side uh it's it, it's asymmetrical whereas the one for the f got a slanty bit yeah yeah so that this here is cut out on the later mm. ones and it's there's a sloped piece on the earlier ones it'll it might not make any much sense what I'm saying to you, but it'd be really obvious when yes. you were looking at the sprue. Yeah. Uh, one's got an angled edge to it, and that's the earlier one. Um, and presumably, uh, later on, in, we're going to see stats for those in mid-war and, and early war when it finally comes. Yeah. Which is nice to know. This is maybe the first, first early war kit that Ever. we've seen because of this whole kind of tank training yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. So as a kit, that one went together really easy. You then went on to build... The Vespa, which is the self-propelled one. Yes. Because I built the Marder, you built the Vespa. Yes. Tell me about now, building the um, Vespa. Again, that was pretty easy. Once we'd figured out something in particular, it's completely on me or us. Mm. I'm not sure. On the back, it describes how you make this uh, the back section where the little crew sits and everything. Hopefully get a picture of that. There's a component piece that's sort of universal for both. But you need to pay attention to the colour of the outline on the instructions on the back. Yes. So anything with a red outline in this instance it's is just for, for the marder. marder. But it's it's fairly subtle it's when you're stupid. The vest. Yeah, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay. How so do I these attempted two to together? put that piece in first, which mm. it didn't really fit, and then realised that, yeah, the yeah. outlines tell you what's going on with what. Once you got through that stupidity, mm -hmm. yeah. again, another kit, nicely engineered. Now, I'm always worried, especially with the German stuff, with the real angle, the, all the different angles. they got the slopes and everything, mm -hmm. especially on these, like, mantlets. Um, how they're going to fit together and glue and stuff. Yes, yes. I, I was scared you know looking I mean? at the kit. Yeah, that this like, might not this fit together very well. Wonky I've got to say, if you, when, when you look at this, you're thinking these pieces might not want to stay in place. They might want to move around a little yeah. bit or fall over. But no. But it's, actually, <laughs> again, it's really good. It's engineered really well. And I certainly found, find I don't know whether it's the same with the Vespa. With the Marder, when I was putting these sort of side armor panels on, they're keyed perfectly. Yeah, I was and expecting I these to slip. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, you get cut. that weird janky cross. Yeah. but there's, they there's the... tiny little lines on the upper hole that they fit it into perfectly. Yeah. yeah. No, I was worried that like one would be out of alignment with the other or something. Um, on mine then, because I built the Marder 2, there were two fiddly bits, though. Oh, yeah, it was I, a... left, I left the <laughs> fiddly bits off deliberately. So the first fiddly bit is the machine gun. The the machine gun, there is a little log on the side armour that the machine gun's supposed to sit on. It does have a kind of square piece at the bottom of the machine gun mount that's the same size to fit on. Yes. But it's fiddly. Yeah. And it's fragile. Yeah. It's a fairly small piece and it's fairly fragile. Even with the plastic glue that's meant it's fused, I know that when I come to put dry brushing on this, that's just gonna come yeah, off. Yeah, it's it's wafer thin um, and the swingy arm that it's on to allow for the sort of coax Because it's, it's on a pintle mount. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, that for me, I actually broke when I took it mm. out of the, the, sprue, the sprue gate, but I think that's because I was using 
perhaps slightly chunkier clippers than I should have been. But yeah, very flimsy. I've left it off with the vest, but I, I thought, do you know what? It's just going to come off anyway. So yeah, yeah. And I, I don't, I don't know how significant it is to gameplay. I, I'm glad that they've included it. Oh yeah, for sure. Now I have to say, this is one of the areas where it's like, as as a model kit, you can understand why they have done they have done that. That is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. For a war gaming kit, I would say, does it need to be there? Or if it doesn't need to be there. I would have had a completely artificial mount that just plugged on the inside of this oh, armor really plate. Solid, yeah. Yeah, like a box that fitted into a lock, a, you know, that, that properly keyed into the side of it. Now it's not authentic, but it would have made it stay in place. <laughs> yeah, is is the thing because um, it's it's such a tiny little mount. I mean, you know, maybe I, maybe I'll get lucky. Mate, you're not going to get lucky because I play games with you, and I am. If even if you don't snap it off while striking, you're going to go out of the way I'm to do gonna, it. Well, not go out of the way, but I like. Pointing at things and balking them completely. Right. What right. was the other fiddly bit you had on there? Uh, that. And then it was this thing at the front, which I assume is some kind of range finding equipment. I'm is not it range sure. Is what... it not the lock? Is it not the like. Is it the gun lock? Gun lock. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's a gun lock, I think, maybe. I'm not. I'm not. One looks like a giant spanner, and one looks like a one of them things that you have in a bubble blower. Yeah. I think one looks like a rest that you use with an old musket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure what it's it is. It's an odd place for it. To, it may be a gun lock, but it's a single piece that fits in the front, and it does have very good keying. Yes. There are two little little divots in the hole that it fits into. Um, it was difficult to get into position oh. because I'd already mounted the gun. Right. So paying attention, do you so, think that would have been easier without? I think it would have been a lot easier if I hadn't mounted right. the gun. Um, but the the keying is there. It, you could I spotted the hole for the middle, so yes. I knew what, how where it was supposed to go. But as I came to put it in place, I realised there was another hole for the for the far end as well, <laughs> opposite the spare wheel. They've got to be gun locks, yeah. You think they probably yeah. are gun locks? Yeah. I just don't know why one's a complete circle though. Um, it's got like a catch on it. It's like a... You've got better eyes than me. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like a... It's a handcuff. Man. Yeah, I'm with you. A manacle. Yes. Right, okay. So there's kind of a little bit of basic, you know, wisdom uh, from Oz. I think they're great vehicles uh, yeah. to add to the range. I think uh, the Panzer II is dead cute. Yes, they, they the, all are. The Vespa is the kind of uh, the lighter end of self-propelled artillery <coughs> compared to something like the, the Hornet, uh, mm. which is which is the bigger the gun. Beast. This is the 10.5 centimeter. And now that there's a self-propelled version of it on the Panzer II hull, Marder's always good. Yes. It's a cheap way the war, of, of getting those guns on the table. Boom. How useful this is in this period, I'm not sure. When you've got the lights of Stugs and stuff. And Panzer Fours. And... I don't mean to the German army in 1944-45. I mean to the war gamer who's got a load of Panzer oh, Fours. Right, right, you know? right. Because yeah. this, is, this is a Panzer IV but without worse. any armour. Right, yeah. Uh, uh, you know... If it's considerably so, cheaper, maybe. Yeah, but. yeah. And I've not seen the stats on it yet. No, no. Um, but I think they're great little kits, a lot easier to build than I expected. As yeah. I say, the, on, the only real snag was that, was couple that of, machine couple gun. A couple of fragile pieces. I was able to put a, a little bit of pressure it on it. It does that. seem to be all right. It's not, it's not too bad. It's not too, but yours kept falling off. I didn't even bother. Because oh, it right. snapped because it, it snapped off the pin. As I say, I think there was more user error, but that was it, it yeah, snapped yeah. Um, a little bit. But yours is secure. So my, if you do get it is. out, <laughs> oh, he's going to snap it now. If you do get it out, then it is pretty secure. Okay, I'm convinced. All right, we'll okay. see. I hope you found that useful. That was our look at the Vespa Marder and Panzer II kits. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. bye, -bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you.